Hey there, Sam. Let's test our API routes in this lesson. As we mentioned before in a previous lesson, feature testing are tests written against features in our app. In other words, we are testing if a group of functions are working correctly together. And we emphasize more on the outcome rather than the individual functions. Testing our API endpoints can be considered as feature testing because an API endpoint normally involves multiple functions working together. All right, let's go ahead and create a new folder in our feature testing directory. I'll call it API, and we'll put all the tests that's related to API in this folder. And we'll also create a v1 folder for our version 1 API endpoints, as we mentioned in a previous lesson. And again, if you think that your project doesn't need this v1 folder, you can just get rid of it. And now we'll start with our post API endpoint. So I'll create a new folder called post, and we'll create a test class in it. We'll go to our terminal and type in PHP Addison make test. And I'll call our test class post API test. And I'll put a newly generated file inside our post folder and refactor the namespace according to our folder structure so that our IDE will stop complaining. And now our post resource has five endpoints for us to test. The index show create update and delete endpoint. And we're gonna write a test for each of them. Let's start with the index endpoint. I'll call the test function test index. And inside the function body, we're gonna follow our testing rules again. First of all, we need to set up the environment. In our case here, we need some pre-existing data in our database before we can test this endpoint. So our first task here is to load some data in the database. Once we load the data, we need to make a HTTP request to call the index endpoint and assert the status on the HTTP response to make sure that it's returning a 200 status code. And we also want to verify the records return from the HTTP response to see if they're matching our database records. All right, let's load some data in our database. We can call our post factory to create some dummy records in our database. I'll just create 10 dummy records for now. Next, we'll need to make a HTTP request to our app and Laravel makes it extremely easy for us to do that. We can call the JSON helper function to send a HTTP request with the appropriate request headers. The first argument is the request method. In our case, that will be a get method. And the second argument is the URL for our API endpoint, which in our case here will be API slash v1 slash post. And our JSON helper function here will return us the HTTP response. And to assert the status, we can simply call a helper method called assert status on the response object. This will perform a test assertion to make sure that the response has a status code similar to what we provided in the argument, which in our case here, we want it to be 200. Other than status code assertion, Laravel also provides us a lot of other assertion helper method, as you can see in the autocomplete drop down here. Okay, the last part of the test is to check whether the records returned inside the response match with our database records. To do that, first of all, let's look at what's inside the response body. Again, Laravel provides us a nice and convenient helper method for us to read the response body. We just need to call the JSON method on the response object and dump the result. Let's test our code. We'll go to our terminal and run PHP unit. Now we created a few unit tests in a previous video and by default, PHP unit will scan our test directory and run all the tests in it. And sometimes instead of running all the tests, we just want to run a specific test to save time and resources. PHP unit allow us to run a specific test by supplying a flag code filter. In our case here, we only want to run post API test so I'll supply dash dash filter equals to post API test. Hit enter and our test is running. Now here we can see our dumb result from our response. And the main data lives inside the data key in the response. So we'll go back to our code and we'll create a variable called data that reads from the data key in a JSON response. Now the JSON helper function allow us to access key inside a response body using the dot notation. The dot notation is a special syntax that allows us to access data inside an array. So here we specify data as the argument of the JSON helper method. We are essentially accessing the data key in the response body. So now if we dump our data variable, go back to the terminal and run our test again, we're now only seeing the data payload in the response without the metadata. We can use the dot notation to access specific elements in the array. For example, if I want to access the element with index 19 here, I can simply put a dot right after a data key and put in 19. And that means we're accessing the number 19 element in the data key. And now I'll go back to our terminal and run the test again. And we see the last element. 
Now, if we want to read the ID key in this element, I simply need to add an extra dot ID in the dot notation. Let's try again. And we see 20. Now, you might be wondering, we only created 10 records in the factory function. Why did our API endpoint return us 20 records? The reason is because every time we run a test, it will not start from scratch, and PHP unit will not reset our database. So in order for us to clear the database before we start running the test, we can load the refresh database trait in our test class. So this trait will magically reset all the data before each test function runs. Let's try again. We'll go to our terminal and run our test. And this time, we're only seeing nine indices in the response body. The downside of using the refresh database trait is that it could massively slow down our testing. So use it sparingly. A way to get around with this speed limitation is to use the in-memory SQLite as our database connection. To use the in-memory SQLite connection, we'll need to go to our PHP unit configuration file and uncomment our database connection environmental variable to instruct Laravel so that it will use the in-memory SQLite rather than our MySQL instance. And now let's go back to our test class and go to our terminal again, run a test, and bam, look at how fast it is. Isn't that neat? One thing to note here is that if you're using the in-memory SQLite connection, we always want to load the refresh database trait. Behind the scene, the trait will trigger the migration script and reset our database. If we don't use the trait, Laravel will throw us an error because the tables are not created in SQLite. Anyway, for now, we need to test if every post returned from the HTTP response is the same as the post that we created using the factory function. So what we can do here is to loop through the data and check if the ID of each record exists inside the post collection from the factory. So first of all, I want to map the post into an array of IDs to simplify our test. I'm using the arrow function here because we only need a simple one-liner function. And now to verify the records, I'll convert the data variable into a Laravel collection because collection has a nicer API compared to native PHP arrays. And I'll call the collection helper method each to loop through each item in the data variable. And for each item, we want to check if the ID of the post exists in our post IDs array. To do that, we can use the in array PHP array helper function. The in array helper function will return true if the needle is found in the haystack. The needle in our case here is the ID key in the post data item. And the haystack is our post IDs variable up there. So to perform the test, we need to make sure that the result of this in array function is true. We can simply call the assert true function for that. Okay, let's try to run our test. Whoops, we got an error. And the reason is the in array function can only accept an array as its argument, not a collection. Our post IDs variable is a collection. So we need to convert it into an array. And that is quite easy. We just need to call the two array helper method on it. Let's try again. And we see green in our result. Great. Our tests are passing. All right, let's move on. The next endpoint that we want to test will be the show endpoint. Again, first thing first, we want to replicate the environment. In this case, we want to make sure that there's an existing dummy post in our database. So I'll use the factory function to create a dummy post. Step two, we want to send a get request to the show endpoint. Step three, assert the status and get the data in the response body. And lastly, we want to make sure that the ID field in the response result is the same as our dummy ID. Let's go to our terminal and run our test, and we get green again. That means our show endpoint is working. The next endpoint that we want to test is the create endpoint. First of all, we want to generate some dummy payload to include in the post request. The best way to do this is to use the make method on the post factory. This method will return us a post model instance without creating it inside the database. So the idea here is that we want to convert this dummy model into an array so we can attach it inside the post request body. And now let's try to send a post request. Again, we'll call the JSON method. The first argument will be the post method. Second argument will be our create API endpoint. And the third argument is the body of our post request, which in our case here, we'll convert dummy into an array. Next, we'll do the same as before. We'll assert the status. This time, the status will be 201 because we have created a new resource. And we'll get the data from the response body. 
Once we got the data, we want to test if the post created has the same attribute as our dummy post. So to compare the API response against the dummy model, we'll need to loop through our result. And for each key in it, we will test if it is the same as our dummy model. But before we do that, we first need to standardize our result to make sure it has the same key as our dummy model. So to do that, we'll convert result into a collection and call the only method to only include the keys that we specified. And the keys will be the keys of the attribute of our dummy post. So now once we got our standardized result, we will loop through it and make sure each value exists inside our dummy model. So in each iteration, we'll call the assert same method. And for the expected value, we'll get the value from our dummy model. And the actual value will be the one inside our result. Okay, let's test our code. We get green again. Beautiful. Now, if we go to our post controller, and inside the post repository, as we define in the create method, every time we create a new post, we will emit a post created event. Let's also test this behavior. Laravel makes it easy for us to test if an event is dispatched. To test this, we first need to call the fake method from the event facade. Calling this method will actually stop Laravel from dispatching any event whatsoever in the app. Laravel will instead capture this event and enable us to perform assertion on them. I'll show you what I mean. So after we have sent our API request, the post created event in theory should have been captured by Laravel at this point in time. So we can simply call another helper method from the event facade, which is called assert dispatched. I will pass in the event class name in it. This assertion function will only work if we have already called the fake method beforehand. All right, let's run our test and we get green again. Okay, let's move on. Let's write our test function for the update endpoint. For the update test, first of all, we want an existing data in our database. So we're going to use the factory correct method to correct a dummy record. Our objective here is to update this dummy record. And to do so, we'll need some dummy field as our update payload. The easiest way to do this is to correct another dummy record by using the factory make method. And now to update our dummy post, we need to know what fields can we update. One way of doing this is to call the getFeeable method from a post instance. The getFeeable method will return us a feeable array as we define in our model. I'm converting it into a collection because collection is much more easier to work with compared to array. So the getFeeable array will essentially return the feeable property as we define in our post model. And now we want to try and update our dummy record with these feeables. So let's look through our feeables, and for each of them, we will send a patch request that updates our dummy record. So we'll call the JSON method again. Method name will be patch. URI will be slash API slash v1 slash post and our dummy record post ID. For the request body, we will specify which field that we want to update. So the field name will be our two update variable, which is one of our feeables. And the value of it will get it from dummy2. Dummy2 has different values, and we want to test if dummy1 has the same value as dummy2 after the patch request. So after the patch request is made, we want to assert the status to be 200 and also get the data key from the response. Once we got the result, we can perform the assertion right away. So I'll call the assert same method. The expected will be the dummy2 value, and the actual value we will get it from dummy1. Now since we have updated dummy1, we need to call the refresh method on our variable to get the latest model, because our variable here is still referring to the model before the update. Okay, let's run our test, and we get green again. Great! The update method will also emit a post updated event. Let's also quickly test if our event is dispatched correctly or not. Again, we'll call the fake method on the event facade, and right after we send a patch request, we'll call the assert dispatch method and pass in our post updated event class. Run our test again, all green. And now we just need to write one more test and we're done. Let's test the delete endpoint. And the idea here is that we'll first correct the dummy record and send a delete request to delete this dummy model. And as usual, we want to test if the status code is 200. Now, after this, the database shouldn't have this record anymore. So if we try to query for this dummy record by using the find or fail method, 
we would expect an exception. So just before the query, we would call the expect exception method, and the exception that we would expect to draw on would be model not found exception. Let's run our test, and it's working. Now the delete endpoint will also dispatch a post deleted event. Let's quickly test that as well. So I'll call the event fake method, and also event assert dispatched, and pass in post deleted. Let's run our test again, and it's all green. Getting green testing result is one of the most rewarding experience when it comes to writing tests. As long as you're writing good tests, you can rest assured that your app should work most of the time. There are still a lot of tests can be added to our test suite, especially set path testing to handle edge cases and catch potential bugs. Try to think of some other test scenario where you can improve the reliability of our test and let me know your ideas in the comments below. Now we still need to write our test for our users endpoint and comments endpoint. I'll leave that as an exercise for you. Again, the solution will be posted in the project repository. We'll learn more about testing as we continue in this series. And I'll share a few more tips in the upcoming videos. I'll see you there. Key takeaway for this lesson, providing the filter flag to PHP unit allow us to run a specific test. Calling the fake method from the event facade stops event from dispatching in our app. And it also allows us to capture and assert event dispatching. Laravel provides us a handy JSON method to test our API endpoints. That's it for this lesson, and I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for your support.